In this video we're going to look at some of the properties that can be calculated and determined using statistical associating fluid theory. But to start with we need to look at some concepts to do with Helmholtz free energy, reduced property versus reduced quantity and residual versus excess properties. Okay um, and then we'll get on to looking at calculating these different properties shown here. So Helmholtz free energy is, is really central to what uh, SAFT calculates and determines so we need to know what this is and it's the capacity of a system to do work and we're talking about a closed system at constant temperature and volume and the equation for this is A equals U minus TS where U is the internal energy of the system, T is the temperature and S is the entropy. We also need to think about a, a distinction between a reduced property and a reduced quantity uh, because this comes into SAFT and it's just useful to define this and, and make sure we, we define what we're talking about here. So a reduced property is normally defined in terms of um, the critical property. So the reduced temperature, for example, is temperature divided by critical temperature. And this gets used in um, various equations of state and sort of models with corresponding states. Um, whereas reduced quantity is more something from molecular dynamics and it's a dimensionless quantity expressed as a ratio of two dimensionally equal quantities. And it's this one that we're really interested in when we're talking about SAFT. So we have the lowercase a and this tilde on top and this is referring to the reduced Helmholtz free energy. Um, so here we have uh, this as well. So to calculate this we have the Helmholtz free energy that we saw from the earlier equation which was U minus uh, TS and then we've got the total number of molecules, the Boltzmann constant and the temperature and this then gives us this dimensionless quantity um, for the Helmholtz free energy. It's the reduced Helmholtz free energy. Okay then we need to think about residual versus excess properties so excess properties are normally associated with the difference between a real liquid solution property and an ideal solution property at the same pressure, temperature and composition. Whereas a residual property is the difference between a real gas property and an ideal gas property at the same temperature, pressure and composition. And it's the residual property that we're interested in for the SAFT theory. That's what comes up and that's what we need to understand. So we have this term a res, so the superscript res refers to residual. So bringing these together we've now got the reduced residual Helmholtz free energy. So we have a with the tilde and the superscript res. Uh, this is the reduced residual Helmholtz free energy and we can calculate it from capital A res, so that's the re residual Helmholtz free energy divided by nkt will give us this term here. Okay, so why is this important? It's important because SAFT can be used to calculate a res and then a res can be used to calculate a number of properties. So we've got this a with the tilde and the superscript res. This is the resu reduced residual Helmholtz free energy. We've then got the contribution of the hard chain system. So Different versions of SAFT have different versions of this term, or it might be broken into two terms, but at the moment I'm, I'm basing it on the PC SAFT version. Okay, we then have the contribution due to dispersion attraction, and then the contribution due to uh, associating interactions. So this is a starting point for SAFT, that we have these different terms, and then we have uh, further equations that help us to determine these individual contributions and this will become a little bit more clear if you look at my videos where I go through these calculations in a spreadsheet. Okay so we can then calculate some properties for a system based on the re reduced residual Helmholtz free energy. So we've got an equation here Z equals 1 plus eta and then we've got the partial derivative of A tilde res with respect to eta at a fixed temperature and composition and that will give us the compressibility factor and eta is the packing fraction again this is a term that comes up 
in the SAFT equations and will hopefully become a little bit more clear if you watch some of my videos looking at spreadsheet calculations of this. So just to reiterate, this is the partial derivative of the reduced residual Helmholtz free energy with respect to packing fraction. We can then get the pressure using this equation. And then we also might be inter interested in getting the fugacity coefficients. So we've got an equation here that reduces it, that um, relates fugacity coefficient with the residual chemical potential. Now the residual chemical potential can be obtained by calculating a res, the reduced residual Helmholtz for energy, and we also need this partial derivative here and the compressibility factor. So again, this is a partial derivative of the reduced residual Helmholtz free energy, but this time it's with respect to the mole fraction of component K. But we keep the temperature constant, the volume constant, and we keep the composition constant apart from for component K. So then we can use those terms and calculate fugacity coefficients. Finally, uh, we can look at enthalpy and entropy, and the equations are shown here. This time the key thing is that we've got a partial derivative with respect to T. And so in summary, we've looked at some key concepts to do with Helmholtz free energy, reduced properties versus reduced quantities, residual versus excess properties. And then we've seen how we can use SAFT to calculate these different properties with the partial derivative.